Please welcome Daniela Perdomo of Gotenna and Court Senior Editor Gideon Litchfield. Thank you very much and good morning. Um, so, Daniela is the person behind Gotenna, and she has brought one with her. So, do you want to just show it to us and tell us what it does and how it came about? Sure. So, Gotenna pairs wirelessly with any phone and allows you to communicate in a completely decentralized fashion. So, what that means is even if you don't have any service whatsoever, you don't have Wi Fi, you can't connect to a cell tower, you don't have access to satellites, you can communicate with anyone else who also has one. Uh, the idea being that off-grid communication is really powerful because we tend to need communication most when central connectivity is unavailable. So whether it's an emergency or you're hiking out of range of service or you simply live in an area that has no service, now you can use the phone you already have on you to communicate uh, when you need to most. Right, so you basically create your own network with other people who have GoTenners. Each of them connects their phone to their GoTenner and you've got a private Encrypted, I believe. It is encrypted, yeah. Network that is completely unrelated to any other infrastructure that's around it. Correct, yeah. And, it has, and it has a range of um, several miles. It has a theoretical range of up to 50 miles in the most unobstructed scenarios, but that's really mountaintop to mountaintop. Here in New York City, we're getting on average about a mile, um, although we've gotten as far as three and a half miles. And if you were to be in a really high building, um, you could get many more miles than that. Right. And it came about after Hurricane Sandy, if I'm right. Yeah. During Superstorm Sandy, a fourth of all towers in the 10 state area affected by the storm went out. And I was sitting there listening to a transistor radio as then Mayor Bloomberg was talking about you know, the disaster in the city and thinking it was outrageous that this hyper-connected city um, with some rain and some, and some wind all of a sudden became uh, totally disconnected. And so we started to, you know, we started to see how we might uh, leverage the phones everyone already carries on them uh, to communicate no matter what. Right. And then, of course, an emergency is um, really on like a uh, far end of the spectrum, but there's so many other situations where you want to communicate and you can't. Sure. So one of the things that for me is really interesting about it is you envisage some use cases, some scenarios that encompass a really wide range of people. I mean, it could be people who are hiking in the mountains and they have GoTennas and they use it to keep in touch with each other, all the way to remote regions of the world where there's no internet, no cell connectivity and isn't likely to be anytime soon unless Google's balloon is floating overhead. Um, and um, people there could use it to reach each other or to reach people in neighboring villages. So can you talk a bit about that, that range and how people you think might use it? Yeah, absolutely. So we just launched three months ago, obviously <coughs> starting with um, the developed world. But I think that our longer term vision is that a uh, distributed communication system makes a lot of sense. And if it's not the future, it is a very certain part of the technology stack that will enable communication for people all over the world. Um, given the current way that we access communication, it's all centralized. Whether it's a tower, a satellite, a router, it's all centralized. And that's great for those of us who live in places like New York City, but it's not great for people who live in sub-Saharan Africa or remote parts of Mongolia or places where you know, the powers that be are never going to bring a central infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is that you can be in the middle of, no of nowhere and still be able to communicate in the most essential way, no, right. matter, no matter what. Yeah, okay. and so you could see it being used, as you said, in like relief work, disaster areas. Yeah, in fact, we're already working with um, big nonprofits and public agencies who do a lot of relief work, for instance, Doctors Without Borders, um, UNICEF, and these are people who need connectivity no matter where they are and mm -hmm. wherever they go. And um, so, so that's been really exciting. But you know, what's interesting is even though this device um, pairs over Bluetooth with a smartphone, and so that's why it's really the um, first world <laughs> device, our very first prototypes worked over the audio jack, with it, which is a universal data interface, which exists on every phone, including you know, the dumb feature phones. Right. And what that means is that literally anybody could use Gotenna to communicate. Right, so you could have a phone and no cellular subscription. Yeah, in fact, you know, I mean, these work right now on iPods, or they work on a, on a phone that actually doesn't have service. Right, so the, the potential, I mean, the, there are lots of ways you could imagine people using this that goes outside the normal channels 
of communications infrastructure. Yeah, in fact, uh, one out of four people who've bought Gotenna so far have bought them with Bitcoin for privacy reasons. So okay. there's a whole <laughs> slew of people who are interested in the idea of uh, what a totally decentralized network on your own terms might look like. Right, and you told me you've had a lot of interest in, from Japan. Yeah, um, in fact, we're speaking to both uh, carriers and um, government agencies in Japan because it's a country that tectonically is located in the worst place ever. So they're always dealing with things like tsunamis and earthquakes. And, and you know, if you've ever been to Japan, they're even more hyper-connected than we are. So the second they lose connectivity, it's chaos. And right. so they're very interested in it from a, you know, a resiliency perspective. Right. There's also an interesting aspect here of, I guess you could call it the, the power dynamic of who controls communication. So right after we speak, um, John Donovan of AT&T is going to be here, um, which is the other end of the communications infrastructure power pyramid, if you like. Um, but you're talking about people connecting to each other either, either when there's none of that or going around it. Right. I mean, I think it's really interesting. We here take, I think, some people take communication, um, the, the access, access to communication somewhat for granted because we have it most of the time. Um, I don't know about you, but when I can't send a text at a really essential moment, I freak out and, and I realize how essential it really is. Um, and I think it's interesting, you know, because communication is something we really expect all the time, I think that many people don't consider you know, who controls and who benefits from um, communication technology. And I think that uh, there is something really interesting about decentralizing something everyone needs and what might happen um, if it's really on your own terms and you can right. communicate completely privately or no matter where you are and potentially for free. And so one of the other things you said when we were talking earlier is that this isn't necessarily about connecting to the internet. I mean, you could potentially use the Gotenna to like get a network of people and have them connected to the internet through someone else's phone, for instance, but that's not necessarily the point. All right, that's a good point. So our minimum viable product, uh, what we've launched with right now, only enables uh, the most essential communication. And so we, we've you know, asked thousands of people and we've done a bunch of tests over the past couple of years, but we uh, decided that the most essential communication is text and location. So that's what Gotenna starts with. Um, we can do voice and, and the internet and videos and everything later, but we did want to start with the most essential kind of communication. Uh, so um, good thing to point out. But yes, so the idea is that currently, and I think the order of operations bef when, you, when we talk about bringing the next billion people online or connected, uh, we tend to talk about the internet. But the mm -hmm. truth is there are many people who don't even have the most essential kind of communication that we all use, which is text messaging. And just the ability you know, to, to say where you are or, or essentially just say I'm okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, that we have to start there. And so, so that is where we're starting. But I do, but what is really, interesting is that with simple firmware and software updates over the air, we can enable Gotenna to then, for instance, let's say you're out of range of service somewhere, and someone else who has Gotenna who's in range of you does have service, they can provide backhaul connectivity to you. Right. And that is really powerful. And so then all of a sudden, um, or for instance, you know, we are talking to some of the big tech companies in Silicon Valley, we can have your Gotenna connect directly to a drone or satellite, or, or not, not satellite, a drone or balloon um, overhead, mm -hmm because the range uh, can get there. Right. And all of a sudden, you don't need all the centralized infrastructure that we've come to expect so that you can access the internet. Right. I mean, it's, as technology goes, it's not actually that high tech, right? It's Bluetooth and it's a radio. Yeah, radio. I mean. So it sort of surprises me that no one has done this before. Maybe they've done it and not succeeded. Why do you think that is? All right, so this is definitely, in a sense, not new technology. We are marrying the tried and true RF radio frequency technology that everyone from the military um, to uh, relief organizations have been using for years. In a sense, um, RF technology hasn't advanced significantly since World War II when walkie-talkies were really introduced. Um, but yeah, so it's pretty essential uh, technology married with the, the UI and the computing capacity of, this, of these supercomputers that we carry in our pockets all the time. Mm -hmm. And, but you know, why I don't think anyone's done it before is because, well, Device manufacturers tend to be in bed with carriers, and carriers are not particularly interested in decentralizing what they wholly control. Mm -hmm. um, it would be interesting to hear, you know, what the next gentleman has to say about that kind of stuff. But I, I do, I do believe that, you know, on the one hand, everyone has been looking in one direction, which is all about how can you stream video in your car, you know, like just 
what, you know, sort of first world problem type mm -hmm. connectivity issues. Uh, but we've been looking at the other end, and in fact, we're working on such low spectrum that most people would even consider it junk spectrum. We're working, for any of you who, um, who know something about uh, spectrum, we're operating on 151 and 154 megahertz. That's very low spectrum. What that means, though, is that we can get great range and great propagation. It doesn't have to be line of sight. It can turn corners, go over mountains. Um, but you get very low bandwidth. And so that's a, another reason why we're focused on short burst asynchronous communication like text and location. Right. And how has it been raising financing for this? Um, it's interesting. We closed our seed round a year ago after having the bootstrap for a year. And I would say that some people really get it. Some people really, really, really don't. Hmm. And <laughs> really don't. And maybe some, some because, of you. Because they think that nobody would pay money for it? Well, or? some people say, I never don't have connectivity. This is not a problem. OK. So you know, great. <laughs> I'd like to hang out where you hang out, because I consistently don't have service. Um, or you know, people who don't get out of the city much or whatnot. And other people who think that you know, the videos, the internet, is actually the most important stuff. Right. But I, you know, I go back to the idea, just think from an order of operations perspective, you, know, you need the most essential kind of communication first, and then you can build on it. Um, and you know, I would say that the people who've um, invested in us are people who really believe in the long-term perspective, which is that decentralizing communication is a really, really powerful idea. And distributing it and making everyone an autonomous node whereby you define communication according to need as opposed to access is a really powerful idea. Right. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Daniela. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Please welcome Bobby Ghosh, Managing Editor of Courts.